So let's talk about torque and angular acceleration. Um, so remember, we had, a, this is what I've been talking about, we have force equals mass times acceleration. In this case, this is the rotational equivalent of everything. So the rotational equivalent of force is torque, okay? So your net torque is equal to your moment of inertia times your angular acceleration. And these are vectors. I don't know why they're not written as vectors, but this and this are still vectors, okay? Um, and we're gonna try an example of this. So now we're going to do a problem. Now we're gonna do a problem where we actually calculate the angular acceleration. So we say two students are fighting over a door. Uh, one student tries to close the door by pushing with 20 newtons of force 0.2 meters away from the hinge, while the other student tries to open the door by pulling on the doorknob with 10 newtons of force. The doorknob is 0.3 meters away from the hinge, and the entire width of the door is 0.35 meters. The mass is five kilograms, and we want to know, will the door open or close? Okay, so we can do this as a, a demonstration. Yes. Okay. I need, a, I need assistance. Oh, no, it's locked in. That's good. <laughs> I need a second person. Anyone? Okay, I'm going to call two volunteers. I don't get one volunteer. All right. So, okay. So, push in the middle. And I'm pulling with this force, okay? Oh, I'm pulling the other way. So I'm pulling this way, right? And we're seeing who's going to win. Okay. He's winning, but um, that's not necessarily the answer. <laughs> okay, you can sit down now. So that's what it looks like. And we'll try to draw this out um, and do this as a problem. So we'll draw, and, and it's giving us the moment of inertia in the problem. That's what this guy is. Uh, so we don't have to calculate that using an integral, which is nice. Okay, so we'll start by drawing a picture. Um, we'll start by drawing the door. So here's a picture of the door. Okay, um, just to represent what's happening with the forces, uh, we have a force here in the middle ish. This is a 20 Newton force, right? And then we have a 10 Newton force here. We have to, where's our pivot point? On the hinge, yeah, let me just color in the door. So let's put the hinge here. So there's our pivot point. Let me draw it in a different color. Make it purple. Okay, and that means we need some distances. We know that this distance is going to be 0 0.2 meters. And then this distance to this force is going to be uh, 0 0.3 meters. And the total distance of the door, and let me move this. The total length of the door, is going to be 0 0.35 meters, which we'll need for um, this. That's going to go here. Okay. Uh, we also know the mass of the door. So the mass of the door is five kilograms. So that goes here. Um, and we want to know the angular acceleration. So we need both our torque equation, right? Torque is equal to F R sine theta. And we also need to know that the net torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Make this. Okay. So those are the equations that we need. Um, so what do we want to calculate first? And what are we looking for? Okay. Angular acceleration, right? So we want to know. Oops, we want to know what 
will be the angular acceleration. That's the answer we're looking for. So we're looking for this. Okay. Um, let's start by calculating that torque because we already practiced doing that. Okay. So how many torques do we have? So yeah, this is at a we're not this isn't a hanging door, so we don't have to worry about the weight of the door. Um, we just have to worry about its mass for the moment of inertia. So we only we have two torques, we have two forces and two distances. Okay. So our net torque. Um, it's going to be our the sum of our torques. So our first torque is going to be um, so which one of these is pushing things clockwise and which one's pushing things counterclockwise? The 20, yeah, the 20 newtons should be um, counterclockwise, right? And the 10 newtons is clockwise. So the 20 newtons should be positive. So we'll say our torque is force, that's 20 newtons, times distance, that's 0 0.2 meters, times sine of theta. What's theta going to be in this case? Still 90, right? Because this the angle between this, this and this is 90. Okay. All right. Um, so that's going to be positive. And then we have a negative 10 newtons times 0 0.3 meters. Okay. So that's just force times R sine of theta in both cases because of 90, sine of 90 degrees is one. Okay, so that's where the sine of theta went. So our net torque should be, uh, turns out, one newton meter. Okay, so that's our net torque. I just net torque one newton meter. So that goes here. Okay, now we need to calculate because what are we trying? We're trying to find. Uh, angular acceleration. So we still need to calculate moment of inertia. Okay. So let's calculate the moment of inertia. In this case, it's one third M a squared. Okay. So what is M? Five. That's five kilograms. And what is A? Yeah, 0 0.35, right? Oops. Oh, that was weird. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's going to give us a moment of inertia of 0 0.205 kilograms. Oops, that's squared. Meters squared. Would you that's the length of the door. So A, so A is this. If this is the door, that's oh. the length of the door. So oh. But we only care about angular acceleration. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, context clues. <laughs> but yes, so this this is the length. Yes. Why is it what? Why is it That's a good question. Um, you'll have to email Friedman, from the author of the book, because I don't know why he did it like this. Yeah, I didn't choose it. This is just a screenshot from the book. <laughs> so, um, it it does have uh, this diagram. So it's just from this diagram, right? It says A. It says this is A. It's not great, but welcome to okay. real life. Physics and engineering. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what? It's not because we're not rotating around the y axis. Do you see what I mean? Like, um, yeah. So to, because we're, this would be, that's with this axis of rotation, B is irrelevant. Okay. Um, if you want to know why, we can do a double integral. Okay. Or you can just trust me. Yeah, it's much faster. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can actually integrate this door uh, over is a double integral over x and y to get the moment of inertia using the moment of inertia stuff that we learned. Um, but we don't have to do that. Okay, it ends up simplifying to this. <laughs> it just gives you the answer. 
Uh, cool. So here's our moment of inertia. All right. And that means we go back to this equation where we have net torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration. So we say angular acceleration is equal to net torque over I. Uh, and we plug in our numbers. So that's going to be 1.0. this in the wrong place. 1.0 newton meters divided by uh, 0 0.205 kilograms meters squared. And that's going to give us um, 4.9 radians per second squared, which the units here are suck. But we'll, we'll go through them in a second. So this is our angular acceleration. And if you want to break this down, hmm. so just looking at the units, it's going to be Newtons, which remember Newtons are kilograms, meters per second squared, but then we have another meter, so we square the meters, and then this down here we have kilograms, meters squared, okay, uh, we will cancel kilograms, cancel meters squared, this gives us one over second squared, but remember, because radians are weird, it just gives us radians per second squared. Yeah, that's an unsatisfying answer, but that's the general idea. Okay, any questions about this? Aside from why the heck did we choose A as a radius? Turns out there's only so many letters. That's the main answer. Wait, what? Oh. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. That's a very narrow door, yes. Upwards. But when you do the door, it's just like single box. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is just the top down view of the door. Sorry. It would look like. Oh. oh yes. God. So who wins? They're both students. <laughs> They're not in our real demonstration, but um, it's going in the positive direction. So that means, yeah, this in this case, I would lose, <laughs> which is like what really happened. <laughs> yeah. So the the person pushing this this person is going to win because that's the counterclockwise direction, which is positive, and you can see that both our torque and our angular acceleration end up being positive. Okay. Always good to reference back to what the actual question was. Any other thoughts on this? Cool. Fun fact, my roof was leaking last time it rained and it's still, and I thought it got fixed. The handyman came and like looked at it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna patch it. And then it leaked yesterday. And he called, I called him. I was like, hey, it's it, like the patch didn't work. He's like, ooh, I never patched. <laughs> <laughs> so, at least that mystery is solved. <laughs> Where do you think we have to start with this? What kind of physics are we doing to start out? You need a moment of inertia at some point, but it's giving you two speeds and a time. What did that tell you? Kinematics. You're going to want to start with kinematics. And what do you think you want to find from the kinematics? Acceleration, angular acceleration, because stuff is spinning. Okay. So remember how to convert from RPMs to something useful. Did everybody get an angular acceleration? Yeah. What is it? Wait, what? 15? Okay. Wrong. 15 pi. 15 pi? Oh, good. Yes, that's correct. Which is 47. Okay. Um, okay. And then what do you do with that? 
plug it in. Do you have to calculate something else first? Probably. <laughs> okay, we're yes, the moment of inertia. So we're gonna go over this. Um oh, I forget about that screen. Oh, and can let's see if it's following me. Apparently I'm invisible to the camera today. It doesn't know. It doesn't want to follow me, it doesn't know where I'm going. It doesn't care. Okay. So we have uh, a lot of information here, but what we're starting with, as we established, is going to be kinematics. So we're going from zero to 1800 RPM in four seconds. Okay. Uh, what that means is that from, from a kinematics perspective, we know alpha, and we're going to assume it's, we're assuming, we're making an assumption, which we know what that means. Uh, we're assuming that it's a constant acceleration because otherwise, I don't know how the heck, it doesn't give us enough information to do anything else. So we have to assume that. Um, so that's going to be delta omega over delta T. We're given delta T. The tricky thing here is the whole delta omega thing, um, which means that we have to convert some stuff. So we know omega initial is zero, which is nice and easy to convert. Uh, but omega final is going to be, remember, omega is 2 pi times the frequency, okay? So that's going to be 2 pi times um, 1800 RPM. But remember, we want this to be in seconds. So for every um, one minute, you have 60 seconds. So you have to divide there. And that's going to give us ooh, 188. 0.5 radians per second. Okay, so that's our final uh, angular velocity. Okay, so I'm just going to plug that into here. So that's going to be uh, 188.5 radians per second minus zero divided by four seconds. And that should give us uh, 15 pi or 47.1 radians per second squared okay so that's our angular acceleration okay and we already calculated our uh angular speed which goes in here okay and well, i'm just going to color code everything because we're already doing that okay and then we need we're actually trying to figure out the torque So in order to calculate the torque, we have to go back and do the moment of inertia, which comes from here. So we know our moment of inertia is one half mR squared. So we're gonna plug in one half. Our mass is 0 0.2 kilograms. And what's R in this case? Yeah, 0 0.1 meter and that's squared. And this is going to give us 0 0.001 kilograms meters, oops, kilograms meters squared. So that is our moment of inertia. Okay. And then we finally get to the equation that is for this section, which is torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Um, and in this case, we just plug these in. So we get 0 0.001 kilograms meter squared times 47 or 15 pi uh, radians per second squared. You put all that together and you have a torque of 0 0.0471 Newton meters. And that is our final answer. Okay, not much in terms of a picture. But essentially, they gave us the picture. It's just this thing spinning around. So it starts at zero and it speeds up at a constant acceleration due to a constant torque from a motor. Okay. Any questions? It could be negative. Um, does it give you information about which direction it's spinning? Yeah. So it doesn't, it, it could be negative, it could be positive. But um, in the, this case, we're not looking for a sign. Really, the torque signs are important when you have to add them. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have to add them, it's like, well, the torque. <laughs>
Um, if you had an actual motor in front of you, you would know which way it was spinning. <laughs>